I'm Mally Moore. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And you're listening to the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. How you doing, Mally? I did most of that without having to read it. It's it's, it's almost second nature now. Right? We, this is our 21st episode. Week. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's second nature in that we know the words, it's just it's a bit of a tongue twister. Well, not wrong. Uh, how you doing, Mally? I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should go ahead and give everybody a pre-warning. We are going to be drinking on this yeah. episode, oh, yeah. so yeah. there's going to be might be some slurping. We're enjoying this fine bottle. <laughs> this little t- little preview. We're enjoying this fine bottle of Charles and Charles Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, Sh- Shiraz, Washington State. I mean, it's only a 2015, but it's not nothing Quality. too special. Well, it's not bad. I mean, I spend most nights drinking like two dollar wine so Mm -hmm. (laughs) i mean at my job this is like nine dollars a glass (laughs) i didn't know you was living large (laughs) um so (coughs) this is the wicker man uh well (laughs) it's a wicker man it's a wicker man uh what's your relationship like with this movie man (laughs) i mean okay i saw i remember seeing the original when i was really little Mm mm-hmm Still haven't seen it. And oh, dude, the original is great. Christopher Christopher Lee, man. I heard it's um, good. Yeah, it's really good. Um, then I saw this. I remember this remake coming out, and <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll it's, talk about the trailer whew. in just a minute. It's, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, and I should also say this movie's been done a ton. On podcasts like ours, like Yo, yeah, people sure. have already beaten this one into the earth. <laughs> but I mean, so it's it's a hard one to like, especially. I mean, the kind of movies we talk about, you know, the downer endings, fucked up, whatever. Mm-hmm. We were gonna have to do this one eventually. Oh yeah, no getting around for it. sure. Well, technically, and we were supposed to do this last week. Yeah, but then La La Land came out. And we're like, well, we got to talk. Yeah, about we have that. to talk about that one. This, I think, I have a different take on this movie than most podcast do so when we get in there I'll, i'm gonna try and play devil's advocate a little bit uh okay. it's it's kind of hard especially <laughs> after that trailer because the trailer yeah, mm-hmm. man it's rough um but if this is your first time listening to our show we are the silver linings playlist we're a podcast that takes movies with down or fucked up sad endings whatever you want to call it. endings that don't either leave you feeling too good or just kind of leave you going what the fuck did i just watch yeah uh we tried to find the good in that in that kind of ending so this one might be a little difficult. I I'll go ahead and tell you right off the top before we even start. I don't even have one yet. I I I got one. You got one? Maybe. I think I'm gonna try and find one as we go along. I'm gonna try a little different uh, approach here. Okay. Rather than I didn't. I gotta be honest. I didn't do a lot of homework for this one. I did rewatch it, and uh, did I do have some notes here for sure? But uh, that silver lining is gonna gonna come to me eventually. I think. I mean, don't get me wrong. My lining is a stretch. All right. Well, I don't think people most people listen to us to actually find our silver yeah. lining. <laughs> our the 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 crutch of our podcast, the whole crevice is like the least important part of our show. <laughs> um, oh so, yeah, when you word it like that, Jesus. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, the Wicker Man. The year is two thousand eight. Director is Neil Laboot. Which we got to see what else he has done. You know, I looked it up before we started. I don't recognize Nothing. anything. I do see that he does have a short that's in post production called. Uh, oh. Black chicks. <laughs> oh. So there's that, and he is please a white dude. Me, please tell me it's sorry, Nicholas Cage. Uh, it's a short, so maybe. <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> so yeah, stars Nicholas Cage, Kate Behan, Behan. I don't know that name, and they dragged Ellen Burstyn into this thing, man. Yeah, who has uh, given it her all? Like she is committed. I mean, yeah. Uh, while you're looking at a budget of forty million and only gross worldwide thirty eight million. So Jesus. bombed, fifteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Not good. Mally is stepping aside for a second onto his bookshelf. What are you looking for? Oh, you're turning the air conditioner off. Yeah, that was definitely on this whole time. That's gone. That that's kind. That's fine. That's cool and fine. Yeah, he has really done. Are you looking at writer Nothing directors or director else. credits? Because I looked at director credits and didn't recognize anything. I don't know. Oh, I'm looking at writer shit. Yeah, I didn't recognize anything under director. Uh, Oh, hold up. Hold up. Hmm. Hold on. Hmm. He definitely did Death at a Funeral. 
which that was a comedy starring Keith David, Peter Dinklage, Danny Glover, Kevin Hart, Martin Lawrence, James Marsden, Tracy Jeez. Morgan, Chris Rock, Zoe Saldana, Luke Wilson. Um, he also I've did, heard of that movie. I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, he did Lakeview Terrace. Um, oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackson. Is that any good? Carried, uh, I don't know. I remember coming out like I want to see that. And, and I never did. <laughs> Nurse Betty. Oh, starring Morgan okay. Freeman, Renee Zellweger, and Chris Rock. I see that he's doing a lot of and TV. Aaron Eckhart. He's doing a lot of TV episodes. He did a lot of uh, Hell on Wheels. Hell on High Wheels or... Oh, Hell on... No, uh, Hell on Wheels, the Dude, AMC know, show? Sure. You're thinking Hell on or Hell or High Water. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, I am. Oh, you're right. It's Hell on Wheels. Son <laughs> of a bitch. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> oh, he did a short called Sexting. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> So I, I guess I I forgot to mention my relationship with this movie. I think I skipped this one. Pretty sure I didn't see it until actually fairly recently, probably the past couple of years. And yeah, it's 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 hard to get through the first time, man, because there's a lot of patches in this movie where it's just super slow and nothing's happening, and so it's really difficult to get to on your first time. But yeah. <laughs> All right, you want to start talking about the trailer? You want to listen to it so we can uh, let the audience know what we're doing? I mean, I guess. Which I, I have to feel like if you haven't seen this movie at this point, yeah, actually, we'll wait. We'll wait till we get the recommendations. Yo, this dude works with Aaron Eckhart a lot. Yeah? He's in like every movie he's directed. Really? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> All right, well, let's listen to the trailer for the 2006 remake of The Wicker Man. Afternoon. Sorry about that. It's okay. I'll get it. Give me your hand! Edward, I know that we haven't spoken in a few years. I need your help. I need your help. I have a daughter. Her name is Rowan. She has been missing for two weeks now. I fear she is in danger, so now I turn to you. Be careful and believe nothing that you see or hear. Lost your bearings? Oh, hey, sorry. Snuck up on me there. This is private property. Do you know her? Hmm, I don't recognize this child. Welcome. girl is still here. She has been taken by who I don't know. I'll find her. If she existed, we would know of her. Whose desk is this, hmm? Rowan? Hello? You suspect foul play. The wicker man returns. Who's the wicker man? I'm gonna search every inch of this town. She'll burn to death. She burned to death. I need your help. Daddy. Fuck. <laughs> what? Yeah. What is what? What is that? I don't know, man. That trailer is rough. Mm. It is rough. It has everything wrong with it. There are no less than five dissolves in the first three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> dissolve. 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 Dissolve to black. Yeah. Random zooms. Uh, scenes in slow motion that you can tell were obviously not shot in slow motion. Yeah, it's all like glitchy and shit. Uh. Just ran shitty, shitty texts over. Oh god, those title cards. God. <laughs> and Nicholas Cage's hairline. Man, well, we're gonna get into that for sure because I do want to talk about his hair for a, a minute. But <laughs> you can't talk about a Nicholas Cage movie without discussing his hair at some in point. that particular movie. You know what we should do? Where question question. What's up? What's uh? 
take all of Nick Cage's movies. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite hair? I mean, I know mine. Ooh. It's an easy one for me. It's Con Air. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, it's those gotta, Con flowing hair. locks. It's got to be Con Hair. Con. God damn it. <laughs> I was gonna you say are, you God, you are a dad. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> dude. Did you see that Pink Panther joke that I posted on Facebook a couple weeks ago? Are we really discussing yeah. Facebook posts? Yeah, no, that I joke, didn't. You did. No. The, I it's the it's I posted it and then after I shared it, I was like, dude, I'm le- I'm laughing legitimately at dad jokes now, like a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, They're, you are a dad. So yeah, that makes sense. But. Yeah. Um, what I was gonna say. Is we what we should do? I don't think we're gonna we're going to this time, but we should try calling in Nicholas Cage expert and previous guest to the show, James Stacy, get his thoughts on the Wicker oh, Man. man. But uh, I think we'll 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 spare because I don't I don't even know if he's busy right now. He might be on set. Let's let's table that for now. Mm-hmm. We we can we can we can do a <laughs> little little extend extension onto a later episode. All right, go back and get his thoughts on it. So because I would love to hear. I mean, I could listen to James talk about Nicolas Cage for hours. Absolutely. Cause that, and he would. Yeah, he would. He would. Um, so if, Okay, if Nicolas Cage <laughs> ever gets cast in a Star Wars film, mm-hmm. I think James's head will explode. <laughs> I don't think he... I think his little heart would give out. Also, uh, now I really want Nicolas Cage to get cast in a Star Wars film. No, you don't. But yeah. I really, <laughs> Maybe a yeah. spinoff, but... No. All right, uh, Wicker Man. You want to talk about it? Um, you ready? Episode nine, Return of the Cage. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> let's talk about this one though. That's uh, the new Triple X movie. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you want to go beat by beat for this one, or you want to kind of just jump around? I think if we go beat by beat, it's going to be such a drag. Let's, let's not go beat by beat, but let's start with the first scene because it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. <laughs> no. That it's just y- Nicolas Cage in a diner. You get your Aaron Eckhart uh, cameo. Yeah, which, like I said... As a mustachio, mustachioed trucker, I guess? Yeah. He does not look right with a mustache, man. I think he, no. he looks good clean-shaven. Well, it's a... Fake mustache, it's a, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a dark mustache. It's a comically fake mustache. Yeah. Like, the the, the glasses with the nose and the mustache? Just get rid of the, well, the glow, glasses and the again, nose? maybe it was... Okay, so you Nick Cage... Mm-hmm defends this movie like regularly yeah absolutely like, he's like oh it's not unintentionally funny like we you know we he we says made it like it was supposed to be a like a dark black comedy. comedy yeah he says it's supposed to be a dark comedy but that's an av- he and he even stretch he even says that in interviews he's like well yeah. we couldn't say that before the movie came out because it's you know just it's presented as a horror movie so like well we can't Go around saying, "Oh, it's funny," because you know it would just ruin the marketing for it. But I mean, it's also being like, "Well, yeah," but people went to thinking it was a horror movie, and then it's just this. What you're gonna ask? Is it a horror movie? No, I don't know what I don't know what genre this falls into. Uh, It's not a comedy. If it is a comedy, (laughs) it's an unintentional comedy. I like. I think it's supposed to be like a thriller, like a mystery thriller. Let me ask you this: at any point. Do you find this film scary at any point of it? No. I mean, like, the ending, which we can talk about, I guess, is the ending, you know, where they break his legs and the bees and everything, should be scary. But it's fucking it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Them breaking his legs with that comical just mallet. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's, it's like, like a Bugs Bunny cartoon like, yeah, or like something. A, like a... Fucking old Looney Tunes, like they just get out this big mallet and start whacking him. Like this like, acme, this, is this wooden acme mallet. Yeah. So we already talked about it, but yeah, we're in this diner. I guess when we start off, and we get he, he I guess he's into self help books. <laughs> Everything's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Which uh, that doesn't come up at all, except for he loses them later. Right? Yeah. yeah that, again, this scene has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Man. <coughs> I feel like you could possibly... Mm, I don't know. I was going to say, maybe you could, there are, is probably a cut of this movie that you could make work. Not as a horror movie, no. but just a decent movie, I think. Certainly more than 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. But yeah, we're in this diner when we start off the scene that doesn't really have much to do with anything. But we are introduced to Nicolas Cage and his jet black hair. <laughs> this hair color that doesn't exist to nature in his no. like you yeah, his hairline is not looking too good. Like 
God, man. It's like if you took the best part of Con Air, of, of, like his hair, and we're like, let's do the exact opposite of that. That's this hair. Basically. Um, what his character's name is Edward <laughs> something. Edward Mo, 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 Mullis? Mullet. Mul- Edward Mullet. God damn it. <laughs> uh, Edward Malice. M A L U S. Malice. Oh, right, because it's supposed to be the combination of the words ma- male and I think phallic. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, my one of my first notes, I should say, is when the title card pops up, you know you're in a bad sign for a movie when the font type is papyrus. Ye- mm. <laughs> and all the opening credits are papyrus. Yeah, that's not a good look. Not a good sign for your editor. Yeah. So, pretty much. Let me ask you that, then. Do you think this movie's main problem is its editing? Like, where would you put the... I mean, the, that's a problem. It's not the only one. What would you put the main problem at? You think it's direction, writing, uh, performance? I think the cinematography looks pretty good. Yeah. I mean, for what, it's, what for it can. What it is, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if I can nail down one big reason. Like, there's just so I feel like many. it's a combination direction editing. I think that's the yeah. two big ones. Uh, yeah. Because, like, I feel like they took the worst takes... And then those takes didn't have. They shot the rehearsals. Yeah, and we're like, Roll good enough. With it. Good enough, man. Roll with it. Who well, isn't there a director that does that? I think Clint Eastwood or somebody does. Yeah, like probably they, they record the rehearsals. <laughs> if you're shooting the rehearsal, it's not a rehearsal. A- absolutely. Um. Yeah, dude. There's just so many things to talk about. Like, where do you start with this movie? Well, let's let's start. Let's get past the beginning stuff. So. Diner, nothing mm-hmm. to do with the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Cage is a cop. He, he, he's, he's a, a traffic or a state, patro- a state trooper. What does that scene have to do with the rest of the movie? Now that I think about it. Nothing. Okay. Wait, well, is that is is Rowan who we find out later is the girl? It's his daughter. He had a baby with this woman he met. Well, let me rephrase that. From Nicholas Cage's point of view, he met this woman. They got engaged. She disappeared. And then years later, we're in the present day. She writes him a letter saying, hey, my daughter's gone missing. Help. Please come help out. He goes to this island. He you know, tries to find his, his, this, this woman's daughter. Turns out, as he meets the mother that he hasn't seen in years, that it's his daughter. So now he's on the search for his daughter. This island is ran pretty much primarily by women. The men all have like their tongues cut out. Yeah, like they worship like... These goddesses and mm-hmm. shit. they they basically are. I, I think it's off the coast of Washington. This island is something like that. They yeah. don't. It's a private island. They don't let anybody in really. It's like they were, like they originally repopulated from Europe to like the Salem area, but then were persecuted during the Salem witch trial, so they repopulated to this island and and it's like old school colonialism. Yeah. Like uh, the when they they, they harvest they harvest honey, honey from bees. But it's so weird because even Nicholas Cage points this out later. They he's in like the 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 bar lounge, whatever yeah, yeah. the pub, I guess, and he's like eating breakfast and he has like the bear honey, like the the honey that's that you get at the store in the bear. And he's like, "Why do you if you make honey here, why do you buy store bought stuff?" And they just kind of gloss over it, like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> Not to mention, where do they get it? I get in my <laughs> all right in my head. That wasn't a scripted line. That was just that Nicolas was Cage Nick asking. That was Nick Cage in between takes. Yep. That's kind of like, like the... Uh, uh, art? No? Okay. That's kind of like the the whole <clears throat> story behind Armageddon with Ben Affleck and Michael Bay. Where Ben Affleck was like... They were in the middle of shooting and he was just like... You know, Michael, wouldn't it be easier to train astronauts how to be oil drillers rather than teaching oil drillers how to be astronauts? So Michael Bay's response was just, shut up, Ben. <laughs> It's kind of like in this situation, Nick Cage is like, why would you have bottled honey from the store if you make, okay. Which is that Michael Bay, Ben Affleck thing is funny because that's a line in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this uh, there's so many loose ends in this movie like that. Like that, the self-help books. There's a weird scene between Nicolas Cage and this one woman about, I guess, He's asking her what's happening tomorrow, and she's like, "Don't you mean on May the 2nd? He's like, "Yeah." She goes, "So the day after tomorrow? Do you remember this scene?" Vaguely. It's just it. It goes nowhere. It's literally like miscommunication. Like, 
I, I, this, this entire script is a miscommunication. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes has on. Are you a fan of Futurama? Uh, I, I dabble. I dabble. There's one episode, but it's one of my favorite jokes. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything. It's just, they didn't even have to animate it like this. But there's a scene where they're doing like a countdown for like a rocket to take off. And Fry has to press a button. And he goes to press it. And like, if this is the button, he, he presses right to the side of it. And goes, oops. And presses the real button. Does it do any? <laughs> there's no point to it at all. I feel like a lot of the shit in this movie is just like that. <laughs> like, yeah, just up, oh, up. Oh, sorry, keep going. So yeah, it almost like I think the whole we're on to something about they just filmed rehearsals and stitched no, it no, all together. I swear that's exactly how this movie was made. <laughs> oh man, like they shot the rehearsals and somehow that's the only footage that survived into the pro mm-hmm. in the post. Mm-hmm. No, Everything no. else got burned. Yeah, <laughs> man, I gotta ask. What? Get burned, get burned. <laughs> god! Oh my god! What? Good that that's got to right. be a, a like a qualifying <laughs> like moment for best Nick Cage freak out, right? Oh yeah! God! Oh, yeah! Yeah! If you're a fan, I mean, everyone knows the infamous Nicolas Cage freakouts. But this I gotta movie say, brings them. There's this movie has a weird spectrum to it. Like you can definitely tell when scenes were filmed on one day versus when scenes were filmed on another day. Yeah, because. I, one of my notes in here, up until the point when we get on the island, I don't think it's a bad movie. No. Like, it's, I'm watching it, and I, our purpose, because this is a bad movie, like, quote-unquote, is to make fun of it, obviously. Yeah. As I'm watching I'm taking notes, I'm like, this all seems okay. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's some stuff that doesn't make sense. There's some stuff that's needless in it, but right. it's not a bad movie. Like, no. But once he gets to, uh, what's it called, Summer's Isle? Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, once he gets to the island, that's when shit goes bananas. Yeah. Like... Uh, man, I, I want to like describe this movie for people that haven't seen it because I gotta say oh, right off the bat, do you recommend this movie? I feel like it's a soft. Oh recommend. no, I think I think everyone should watch this movie. I think you should it's skip to so ridiculous. Skip to the schoolhouse scene, watch that, and then probably skip to the ending. Right? I feel like oh the schoolhouse, the schoolhouse scene is so stupid, bat shit crazy, dude. <laughs> Like, he's looking for this girl whose name is Rowan, and they go into the schoolhouse, and there's this teacher teaching all girls, and they're all, like, basically, she's, like, chastising him because he's a man. Yep. And then she, like, there's a crow in a desk, and she's, like, this is a assignment they were doing. We we're trying to see how long we keep this crow in this desk before it died. Don't know what we're learning from that, but, and then, like... That's the only empty desk. He's like, the teacher's like, oh, we never seen Rowan. We don't know who that is, but she's on the attendance. Like, they're just, are they just really bad <coughs> at keeping this lie together? Or, like, are they just trying to fuck with him? Because I gotta ask, the, the end goal here is what is his, oh, fuck, what is the girl's name that he had the baby with? Woo Willow? Oh my god! Oh yeah, that's right. Another plant. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> every, every woman on this island's named, named after, after a, a fucking bush, plant, a plant, <laughs> or a tree. Um, I like they got to was it Le- Lily Sobieski's character? Yeah, like we need to name her, and they just gave up at that point. Like, yeah, fuck it, honey. <laughs> I, I noticed that too. Um, but ah oh man, what what point was I trying to make here now? Oh yeah, the whole point of this plan is that she. I guess this this community of women find men, lure them to this island, sacrifice them to the wicker man, which is basically a giant like wicker statue that they burn alive the men in, in order in in their mind it like guarantees a good harvest next year for all the bees and the which, honey. Okay, this goes to show how shitty of a copy is. He was on this island for how long? Come At on. least two days. <laughs> Maybe more. Just running all over the place. He ain't stumble on the big ass wooden fucking deity statue. <laughs> Not only that, he came across I think one bee until he got to like the big field of honeycombs. Yeah. Like. Uh, well, like, anyways, should be everywhere. Let me see if I can understand. I think I kind of laid out the basics for this plan, but let me let me see if I can do it from uh, Willow's. <laughs> perspective okay okay she goes she goes I'm inland she goes to the continental united states right mm-hmm. meets this guy she basically picks out a guy wait i'm gonna 
sip this the entire time you're explaining the movie. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So he, uh, Willow goes in Lynn to the to the stage, meets this guy, picks him out, decides this is the guy I'm going to use. She, I guess, gets engaged to him. So they date for at least a couple weeks, couple months. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, they have sex. She leaves, abandons him. You want another? You want yeah, some? Here you, you go. win because I ran out of wine. No, come on, I'll, I'll pour you a glass. Uh, she leaves him, I guess, maybe pregnant. Maybe she's not pregnant yet. Tell me when. When? Uh, she leaves either pregnant or not pregnant. We don't really know that. Going again. Uh, he doesn't hear from her for at least. Rowan's at least like seven or eight years old. Probably at least like ten or eleven. Like conservatively somewhere around eight or nine, just to yeah. be safe. Uh, Keep going. she mails a letter to him saying, "Hey, she's gone missing." Doesn't tell him that it's her, his daughter. She comes to to bring him to the island. They come to the island, then they just kind of fuck around for a couple days before they finally sacrifice him to the queen bee. <laughs> what is this Jesus. plan? This plan is so convoluted. I don't know. Why couldn't it just be, I go to the, the States, I find this guy, I bring him back to the island, we kill him right then, boom. Like, why do they? Ha- why does he have to arrive a couple days early? Why do they have to fuck? Why, why, why couldn't they just like immediately bombard him? Shackle them up, keep them there, and then when they need to, kill them. Like, I mean, why let them? Why do they like wait? However many years. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, okay, we have to have a reason for him to come to the island. I know. I'll get pregnant, raise the kid. She'll go missing, then we'll call him. And and, and it's not so even in seven years. That's gonna work really. It's well. not even that. It's just this thing happening to Nicolas Cage. Like, because if the end of the did you get the ending scene with James Franco? Yeah, get James Franco and who's the other guy? Uh, uh Jason Jason Ritter? Something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? But th- so, so they're, they're implying again. they're implying that's their plan, but their plan is so like convoluted. Like just bring men to the island. Like I don't know, like he takes a ferry to a to like a seaplane and then takes a seaplane out there like I don't know. It's such a convoluted plan and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like we're going to they have to be outsiders. This movie would never work in present day. <laughs> it only worked ten years ago. Yeah, <laughs> man, dude, I'm so. You would be Snapchatting the fuck out of this. Yeah, it I, would be all over Twitter. Well, they, they don't just, get cell reception apparently on this island because this little flip phone didn't work. Yeah, um, but we have like, you know, good phones now. Oh man, four <laughs> G and stuff. Okay, well, I I skimmed over this, but what I want to talk about too is he they is... just burnt me alive and stung me with bees. <laughs> WTF? Hashtag, Hashtag EpiPens. Hashtag, Hashtag EpiPens. <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna say he is the worst. Hashtag it's lit. <laughs> he is the worst cop ever. Oh, fucking awful. What, Bar they, none. Ha- the island. No one on this island apparently knows what a fuck a cop is to begin with. Well, so. to be fair, if they bring this up, he's out of his jurisdiction. Like they, he has no, yeah. no like no, authority wait, there. Is he out of his emotional jurisdiction? Mm, though? Yeah, he's out of his league 100% here yeah. for sure. But again, there's just so many like, why I feel, does I feel this like happen? They were, they, I feel like the original plan was they were going to just kill him immediately, but that he got off they had one conversation with the first they saw him had one conversation where like yo we got to fuck with this dude this is <laughs> dude no, what hey, is going on with hey, his hairline no, put the big wooden deity back in the barn for a minute let's take our time with this one right so like they are basically just fucking with all the, all the women are giving the cold shoulder like the first thing the first interaction he has with women on this island is he sees these women and there's these men or that are carrying like this bag that is like shaking yeah. and bleeding and he's like what's in the bag a shark first of all i don't know why you go immediately to a shark but he looks in the bag it apparently scares him and they all laugh at him like do you know what was in the bag because i did was that a joke or i don't know because <laughs> they don't but, show what's in the bag and he doesn't follow up with any of that like no. not only that he he has a picture of rowan and he shows it to the women he's like have you seen this woman they don't look at it and they say nope never seen it He's like, well, it, it helps to look at the photo before you're like, they look at it for like two seconds. Like, nope, that, that is so suspicious. Again, I feel like that was a rehearsal and Nicolas Cage was reminding them they actually have to look at the photo. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe that's what this movie, maybe that's the comedy aspect of it. Maybe 
Neil, Neil Labu and Nick Cage were like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're, you know 100% that the camera's rolling. No one else does. Okay? Oh. So, like. Dude, that's actually that would be brilliant. A, that would be a really fun way to make a comedy. Like, But you'd have to be so inside on it. Like, maybe that's the, their problem is they didn't think it out all the way. They're like, well, we can't tell people ahead of time it's a comedy because it's marketed as a horror film. So, you know. If that's the case, if that's what we're if we're if we tapped into uh, it, this God, that shines such a whole new. Light I was say, on if this it, movie, maybe I need to rewatch it with that in mind. Because like, oh, yeah. imagine if the the part with him freaking out with the how did it get burned? How did it get burned? And she has no idea that's about to happen. Oh my God! <laughs> what you gonna say? What is what is that uh, that actress's name? Do we know? Is, is Willow right? But what's the uh, you know? I is that the the other woman know. that's billed? Kate. Well, anyways. She has this look Kate on her. Kate Behan? Behan? Oh, uh, of, of course. Bees. Well, no, uh, actually, <laughs> do you know what her last name stands for hmm. in some language? Hmm. Beekeeper. Really? Yeah. Re- really? Yeah. That's why she got hired. That's that's a thing. <laughs> um, what else? Has she been in anything? I was going to say. Oh, she played Coat Check Girl in Matrix Revolutions. Wait, what? Coat Check Girl? Yeah. I don't remember. Coat Check know. Girl. She... Um. Coats what I was going to say, check some coats. I'll get, shut what up. I was going to say is she has a look on her face every time she's talking hey, to Nicolas Cage. She was also Cage. in a movie called Burning Man, which is ironic. This woman's whole life seems ironic. Um, Yo, she was in Flight Plan. <laughs> let me get this out. This woman has a look on her face this whole time that he's talking to her where it seems like she's constipated. But maybe that again, maybe that's because this whole rehearsal thing, like maybe the director's like, all right, she has no idea what you're going to say. She just knows she's in the scene. Go act your Nick Cage's Cagest. And, like, that's just her look of, like, what is happening in this scene, in this movie? Maybe it was just Nick Cage and Ellen Bernstein were the only ones in on it. Because <coughs> Ellen Bernstein, Bur- oh, poor Ellen Bernstein, like, yeah. came a long way from Wake Room for a Dream, lady. Like, she has given this movie her all, too. I mean, it's Ellen. I feel like she doesn't, she doesn't half-ass anything no absolutely She's not like, Fuck it, i'm in this movie I'm we're doing it my ass off. which no better actress than her for this role yeah. right i mean but unfortunately it's just not a very good movie but yeah. man i also gotta say we're 30 minutes now into this ep- ep- podcast and we still haven't talked we haven't even gotten to the bear costume the cult, oh the nicholas cult. cage punches a woman <laughs> i was gonna say the cold the cocking face I was just about to say the cold cocking of women, him hijacking. Oh, also fun, because you haven't seen the original, right? Mm-mm. So do you know who plays pretty much the equivalent of Ellen Burstyn's character mm-hmm. in the original? Ellen Burstyn? It, it's a male. Oh. No, God, that would have been brilliant. <laughs> um, it's a guy. It's a Christopher Lee. Yeah, yeah. I remember you mentioned Christopher Lee. I didn't know if he was the lead or not. That's why. Um, Him hijacking a bike at gunpoint. Uh, like all hell breaks loose in the third act of this his, movie. His his comically large everything in this movie seems way larger than it should be. His epipens, yeah, they look like fucking like. Oh yeah, <laughs> we forgot to mention, guys. He's allergic to. Bees. Oh, that's 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 the bees knees of this movie. He he's is allergic. allergic to bees, and he's on an island ran by because bees because of fucking course he's allergic to bees. Because why not? But it doesn't. Why not? It doesn't amount to anything because no again he just gets stung they give him the epi pen and then they continue to torture him some more <laughs> they're like like i think it, what the order is they break his legs right yes with the mallet uh they put on the bee mask thing stab him with the epi pen then drag him to the wicker man statue and burn him alive i feel like we should let the audience hear the audio Okay. From the B scene. Well, I mean, I'll play it, but everyone, if you know this movie, you know this freak out, right? Was, oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, they like he like so they break his legs. He gets stung a thousand times in the face. He basically dies. Dies. They revive him with an epipen, which. I don't think that would work at that point. Burn him to death. I don't think it would work at that point. No, if they stabbed him with like ten, epi- like <laughs> well, this epipen is big enough. One epipen for every bee sting. I mean, this Maybe. this epipen is probably big enough to count as ten epipen. Again, like they, I feel like they got the art director from the Looney Tunes. <laughs> 
the bear costume, man. Should no, we talk about it? What is the bear? I mean, I get, I get it, bear honey. But what does the bear costume have to do with anything? I don't know. All right, so all I know is that Nicolas Cage punches a woman in the face. He clocks the fuck out of this woman, like <laughs> again. I don't think that was scripted. Oh, you know, probably not. <laughs> I think that this extra just got a little lippy with Nicolas Cage, and mm-hmm. he laid her out. <laughs> And the camera was just <laughs> you know, shoot everything. All right. Let, well, before we get there, if, if we're gonna play the B, the not the B's audio, let's go ahead and listen to it. Real okay. Quick. Thank God. <laughs> no, 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 man! Ah! What? Ah! What is it? What is it? What, what is that? What is that? What is it? Oh no! Not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Oh, no, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! I, I mean, what else to say? Acting. Like, <laughs> there's ack. Ting. That is bar, bar none, probably my favorite Nick Cage freakout. It's right up there is with uh, I'm a vampire, I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire, I'm a vampire. It's right up there, man. I don't... You know what? Okay, it's not even a Nicolas Cage freakout. You know what my favorite one is, though? I could eat a peach I could, all what, day. What is it? I could... Is it I can eat a peach or is I can suck on a peach? Mm. Fuck. Is it I, can, I could suck on a peach all I day. could suck on a peach for hours or something God like that. God damn. I, mm. <laughs> Sorry, James. Oh, man. It's it like... There's still so much to talk about with this movie. I know. Like, it's his, so ridiculous. His hallucin... I think the movie's... <laughs> The first instance that this movie is going batshit bananas is when he's on the ferry and he's going to the seaplane dude to get to the island. So convoluted. Of course. But he's on the ferry and he sees... Why don't you just take the seaplane to begin with? Right. I mean, he sees the... Like a hallucination of a girl in a sweater that he thinks is Rowan. Keep in mind, we're on a ferry in the middle of the water. Yeah. And she gets hit by a train. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. She gets I don't know. the hallucination gets hit by a train, and he kind of just snaps out of it. But that's that's when I first saw. I was like, okay, wait a minute, what's happening? <laughs> in my head, whenever Christopher Nolan was pitching that one scene in Inception with the train in the city, yep, I feel like he screened this scene from The Wicker Man. It was like, I want to do that, but in a city. Well, apparently that's what he does with that's all what Christopher Nolan. Th- yeah, that's what he does with movies. He's like he, he takes like two or three movies, he shows them to his entire crew and he's like we're going to make yeah. those movies as one. Batman Begins, he showed Blade Runner. Blade Runner, Dark um, Knight, he showed Heat. Dark yep. Knight Rises, he showed A Tale of Two Cities. Inception, he showed The Wicker Man. <laughs> dude, that's uh, we're yeah. Going to do this but with dreams. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane, dude. That is bananas. Um where else, what else do you want to talk about, man? There's still Dude, there's so much ground. I, that's what's making this episode hard. Is there's so much ground to cover? Like, do we want to? It's just sheer ridiculousness. <laughs> like, I can't. I'm I'm trying he's to understand. Allergic to bees. He goes to an island where they manufacture bee honey. Everyone is named after trees. They're all <laughs> women. He's I'm a t- shitty cop. I'm trying to understand like they the logic wear of the bear plot. Outfits. He punches one. They <laughs> torch. Oh, sorry. He finally finds the daughter. Turns out she's in on it. She hundred. She's the one that she lights just, the wicker man on she fire. She was just there to lure him. Mm-hmm. They break his legs. They kill him with bees. Well, they do, revive let, let, him. Let's talk about they that. They put him in the wicker man. His daughter burns him to death. Let's talk about that. So his daughter's in on it the whole time, right? Yeah. He tries to escape before, uh, you know, whenever he's in the bear costume. He tries to escape because women find him. And he runs through like a field. And his he meets his daughter. And she tries. he thinks he's helping her escape. But he brings her right back <laughs> to the big group of women. Like... I don't know. There's it's so many pointless scenes like that. Like that, the diner scene. I feel like there was a missed opportunity for Nicolas Cage to punch a little girl. It's like, you led me back here. Poof. Could have kicked her. Like, oh, that would have been across the Across the field, yeah. The sweet chin music, a little 10-year-old girl. There's... Uh, missed man, opportunity. Man. Oh, also, there's a few different cuts of this movie. Oh, so I've heard. Um, so I've heard. <laughs> so just there's, there's scenes, watch them all. 
There's parts where they Watch edit the ending greatly, where you can only hear like AD, you hear ADR of his legs getting broken. You'll yeah. get to see it, which, man, like it's my notes don't even begin to do this movie justice. Um, let's let's talk about apparently the, the 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 female cop that he that he meets well not meets that he knows at the beginning of the movie was somewhat in on it too someone was telling me that like what as i was reading it on it you know his female cop friend like yeah. she kind of tells him to go to the island or whatever like of course she was in on it yeah oh. like but do you understand we should have known her name was detective leaf did you not that's d- not true but do you not kidding. like that's fine and all but you need to justify that with your what sense does it make okay so we're gonna get this guy right this is the guy that Willow's picked out. We need to get someone in on the police force there to entice him to come to come to this island, right? Like, there's so many layers to this plot. It's it's so convoluted and so unnecessarily convoluted. Just oh get, man, I was really hoping that her I name was, was something like that. Yeah, she was just credited as female cop. Well, shit, damn it. Um, and what else do you want to talk about, Molly? Like, the, how about the scene where he first like. Starts to kind of like quote unquote lay down the law, and he's like smacking his wallet on the the tavern, God, the, the bar top, slapping Jesus, <laughs> like I'm just a terrible cop, dude. Like call him back up when you realize how shady these women are being. Leave, come back with a <laughs> warrant or with wimp. Well, again, he doesn't have authority, but come back with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, like call someone and tell them about it. Like you don't want to ask more questions about like why the men have their tongues cut out. Why all the women seem to like you? He has a hundred percent legitimate evidence that this little girl existed, and that they're like covering up what happened to her. Doesn't like even the the school teacher's like he's like uh, you know she died, and he's like what happened? He's like please we don't want to talk about it. And he's like okay, like no your job is to oh, no, find she, out what happened. Uh, she says something like, uh, she'll burn alive. And he's like. What, what did you say? He goes, exactly what I meant she to say. She burned to life. Or she yeah. burned to death. Yeah. Or she but burned before, to life. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. But before that, he's like, she's like, he's like, well, so what? She's dead? He goes, well, we don't like to call it that. He goes, okay. Where's her body? Please. We don't want to talk about it. It's like, okay. <laughs> like, the worst detective Answer work. Answer my question. No. But then Fair again. enough. Then again, he's not a detective. He's just a. Is he? I mean. He's like a, he's like a highway patrolman. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. Oh, apparently he got commendations for that for whole being opening next scene. To a car that blew up. Who gives a shit? A car that blew up that had no bodies in it. Let's let's promote you. <laughs> so, like, I would think he would be on like sick leave after that. They're like, you know, he's like, no, there were definitely two women in there. Okay, well, we found no bodies. So, and not to mention, I'm that that whole accident is kind of his fault. Like he pulled them over. To give her her stuffed animal back. Kind of his fault. I Way mean, to go. Dude, they were probably in on it. Not even that. They, Aaron they, Eckhart was probably in on that's it. That's got to be a hallucination, right? But no, it can't be because... I don't know. Okay, let's make sense of that because that's a whole new... Uh, okay, so we go with the theory it's not hallucinations, right? So that means the bodies just disappeared like... What happened there? Like, if you say it's a hallucination, fine. But that car was driving. It got smashed. Obviously, the other police officers I feel know like about what it. What happened was that entire scene was for a completely different movie, and somehow <laughs> those that that footage was given to this editor, and he was like, "There's no notes about this. Nope. Fuck it. Looks like you could go here. Yep. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> like that." <coughs> I, I know there's no answer, but I want to find out what all that means. Like, like I, what is the purpose of this I stuff? Have my, here's my new theory regarding those. So you have the diner scene, the highways, like the car explosion scene, then the actual movie. Mm-hmm. They did the old thing. You remember how like little like shorts and cartoons used to play before feature films? That's all that was. This was the lead in to it the movie. It just happened to start like. The two short films and this movie just happen to star the same guy. <laughs> As they were a probably shot on like in between takes or something. So you have the short, you have the, you have the short film that I'm going to refer to as "Everything's Okay." Right. Then you have the short film "Highway Explosion." Mm-hmm. 
and then you have the Wicker Man. I want to look at something real quick. Uh, how long do you think this movie is? Mm, hour 40 minutes? Close, hour 42. Dang. I feel like we could get this down to an 80 minute movie. Like a nice tight 80 minutes? 80, like I think the, the, the wide release has to be at least 88 minutes. We could probably get down that down to exactly 88 minutes. Yeah. Like there's probably a cut of this movie that can work. Still not going to be scary, no. but could be decent. You know what I mean? Cut. Out, there's so much random like <coughs> stuff that's not has no bearing on anything. That stuff that just happens. The diner scene, like we already talked about. There's pointless. The the whole miscommunication between tomorrow, no, the day after tomorrow. Like I know you probably don't remember, but that's a solid like 30 seconds that has nothing to do with anything. Um, the whole, uh, <laughs> do we want to talk about the woman with the bee beard? Oh, like, God. I forgot about that. The dude that's got all the, the bee stings in him. Like, do we, we haven't even really talked about Ellen Burstein at all. I mean, there's still, I don't think we have enough time to talk about everything. I don't think I have the mental capacity. I'm kind of glad we didn't do this one beat by beat because we would have got lost. Yeah. I like, mean, B by B. Oh, <laughs> uh, so again, there's. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry if it's like it's stagnant. It's it's <sighs> lagging. I'm trying to make sense of this plot, and I think it's a futile effort because it doesn't make sense. At we all. should have done this as a live episode. Like we watched like a the live movie commentary while we did it, man. I don't know if I could watch this movie again, dude. I've seen it twice now, and the sec- this this time for the like the rewatch for this one, I I kept putting it off until like the last possible second. I was like, yeah. dude, I can't, I can't I, do it. But again, I will play devil's advocate. I think up until we get to the island, it's not a bad movie. No, no those two short films they showed before the movie are fucking great. Yeah, uh, the actual I, movie was garbage i will say but so entertaining nicholas cage's sweater looks really comfortable when he's at his yeah, police sweater yeah. uh i think <laughs> there's a really stupid cheesy dialogue like when he's showing the letter to his partner or the guy with the the, the other police officer with the mustache yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like the plot thickens i didn't even know you had a plot you could feel like you, i could feel the screenwriter being like command save check mark did my job for the day <laughs> that that line you is know golden. You know, there's at least one take that exists where like the plot thickens. I didn't know you had a plot. Turns to camera. I didn't like, know. I was like, I didn't know we had a plot here either. <laughs> I think that. I think is that joke supposed to be like super meta? Do you think? No, <laughs> I think that's supposed to play for laughs or like. Uh... Yeah, that, that, that was one of those. Uh, Dark comedy jokes Nicolas Cage was talking about. God, man. If you ever get the DVD, watch the behind the scenes about this stuff. Because Nick Cage swears up and down. This was like all... It, they were all in on it. It was going to be a dark comedy. But well, that's... Even that. That's an I interesting... I like Nick Cage thought it was a dark comedy. No one else did. And no one else did. Even so, I mean... Uh, I don't think the director knew what he that, was that's a make. That's a bold choice to just be like, let's take this classic horror film... Let's put it in 30 years later and let's make it a dark comedy. Like, man, I don't that's, know. Mm. Like, <laughs> what? That's like going from Halloween 1 to like H2O or something. Like, as the that's next. like going from Halloween 1 to Halloween Resurrection. There you go. That was the one with Buster Rhymes. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking H2O. I don't know why I said H2O. You're right. Uh, 100%. H2O was Josh Hartnett. Yes. Um, so. Is there anything else you want to talk about with this movie? Yes. Silver lining. You got one. Go. You figure yours out, and I'll. I because I haven't even thought about okay. it since we got here. I'm trying to, you know, what's what is it in this? The sacrifice is supposed to increase honey production. Honey produ- which they stay in the. Movie. That is exactly honey what I was going to say. Has been down. Maybe maybe this latest sacrifice will you know bring production back up. That's nothing. They don't have to buy store bought honey. Anymore. Is it implied that the last sacrifice? Oh my god! That's why they're buying store bought honey. 
Because honey production is down, so they can't keep any for themselves. But even they have so, to sell all the honey they make. Even so, where That's are they buying, buying this honey? honey? Oh my god, the plot thickened. But even so, where are they buying this honey? Like it doesn't seem like Amazon, anything. Amazon, dude. It doesn't seem like anything comes in this. They even say like no one's allowed on this island. It's like I don't even know. How, he only got there because he got invited. Like I mean, they leave the island on occasion, and they obviously. have to get there by seaplane. So that's oh god. So that's how it works. The girls go fuck some random dudes. So is it like, also bring back groceries. So is it like Rumspringer? Like what do they do? Yeah. Well, is it honey like the only edible item that doesn't expire? I guess is the thing. I think that's the the, the case. Is that honey is the one thing in this world that will never never expire? Really. So maybe they just stockpile it every time they go in. I mean, I guess. Do you, you got anything? Can you? You, got you actually? Else? I was thinking as you were asking, like that. That was what I was gonna say. You steal mine. But let me ask you this then. So does that? They say that oh, last year's harvest <clears throat> didn't go so well. Does that mean they tried to sacrifice someone and it didn't work out, or did they not have a sacrifice last year? Maybe. Because if that's the case, I don't, man, I still have so many burning questions. I don't even know how to articulate half of them. But let's see, silver lining. Um, Those uh, questions really buzzing around mm-hmm. your head. Uh, Got one. <laughs> that was a that was pretty much the silver lining I was gonna go with. Um, hmm. <coughs> Yeah, man. Uh, when you really stop to think about it, like you wouldn't think this would be a, a this wouldn't be a movie that would stump us, but I think this one is like a pretty. They don't really have any redeeming. I don't know. This might be the first. I time. got another one. Okay. Well, Rowan's not dead. <laughs> She's just a murderer. <laughs> well, yeah, but hey. Mm. Would you rather a ten-year-old girl be dead? Or you know, no, that's a good point. That is a good point. Do you really? Do you think she was really his daughter? Oh man. Um. um Again, the plot thicket. Well done, screenwriter. If that's the well, if that's well the case, done, wait, 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 wait. If that's the case, why do they need to go to the island? I mean, go to the inland and stay there, date, marry, whatever, leave. And then bring the people back like Maybe years like later. Part of Why couldn't it just be like a brand new baby? Like, hey, I, I'm I had to come back home to my island. We have a baby. Come see the baby. Maybe they're just like. Maybe at the time they were just like, we're good on sacrifices right now, but like, let's plant those seeds. By the way, it's only cops they bring in too. Because I don't know if you remember this, but the James Franco and Jason Ritter scene, they are like they mentioned that they just graduated from the police academy. Oh. So it's only police officers that are bringing in. That's a very specific... Like You would think by now, obviously this has got to have been going on for a little while. Someone should kind of start piece to... Hey, people go missing that are, in the, that are in the police department. And they all get letters from people that are on this island. Like, these are the worst cops ever. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, hmm. Silver lining... Wait a minute. I've never failed on a silver lining. Take your time. Yeah, I got this nothing. Delicious. I got nothing. Nothing? Really? This might be the first time I... Usually, I, I have nothing. This might be the first time I have to... to, to this is the first time I ever won anything. You. Yeah, I have to secede Holy to you, I shit. think. In I the, had two. In the, interest, in the interest of time, I will succeed to you and tell you I got nothing this week. Wait, this is a very... If, if you take I'll it... you going to be if I come up with a third one? No, nah, I mean, if you take it, take what happens at the end of the movie out of the equation of the context, like, just describing it. A man goes to an island to try and find his lost daughter. The people at that island not only break his legs... I got a third one. Well, let me get through this. Not only breaks his legs, not only stings him with bees of which he's allergic they resuscitate him just to put him in a giant wicker statue and have his daughter burn him alive that's a pretty downer ending dude like 
you don't get much more like fucked up than that. Unfortunately, this movie's execution just doesn't work out all that great to make it that uh, impactful. What were you going to say? My third silver lining, since you're slacking. Yep. Technically, he solved the case. (laughs) (laughs) More commendations. I mean, I'm just just throwing it out there. Technically, he solved the case. He found his daughter. I do have a silver lining. Well, you're two behind I'm, me. I'm so two. It's, that's fine. It's three zero. It's right a now. very, bring the very, heat. very you better bring the heat. It's a very small one. Uh, the little girl and the woman in this that car. Be a good one. <laughs> the little, the woman and uh, the little girl in the car at the beginning of the movie. They didn't actually die, so he did. You know, he doesn't have the weight of two dead people on his conscious. <laughs> right? Is that good? I don't know. They never explain. I'll give you that one just because that just makes it 3 1. They never uh, explain his hallucinations either, like what causes them. Another loose thread. Oh, man. Another we should do, loose. like, not a fan cut of this movie, but like a recreation of this film tying up all the loose ends. Like, make it oh, a cohesive God. story that makes sense. Uh, that would. I like. I want to do like that. Like I want to do a cut, like that eighty-eight minute cut. I think it can be done, man. Especially if you had the raw footage. I think you can find better takes and yeah. trim around the shit. Oh, all right. Let's talk some trivia. Uh, normally, you know, we do our silver linings afterwards, but that's fine. This is a little unconventional episode. Yeah, it's unconventional fucking um, movie. So you want to know a big. Big, big thing about this movie or why it is the way it is. <laughs> why? It wasn't screened for critics. Oh, shit. Which, again, that might give some credence to this whole supposed to be a dark comedy marketed as a horror. Because if... That might... We might... They might be that onto something, dude. That would a lot more sense. Uh, Robin Hardy, who was the writer and director of the original film... Uh, was extremely critical of this remake. Uh, <coughs> I mean, I can't blame him. I feel like anyone involved in the original probably saw this was like, what so the is fuck? so was Christopher Lee. They both were like, what the fuck? Um, Hardy had his name removed from the credits. Side note on Christopher Lee, I showed I was discussing Christopher Lee with someone earlier today actually, and they had never heard his uh, any of his music. Oh, his uh, death metal. His his Christmas album. Yeah. Jingle, uh, Jingle Hell was one of my personal favorites, but yeah, he was, was a bad motherfucker, dude. dude Fought his, Nazis like his whole yeah, life. Okay, anyone listening, if you have not one, if you don't know who Christopher Lee is, GTFO, look up like that dude's life story. It's mind like it's a biopic that would be a trilogy. He was one of the, <laughs> he, he was like really good friends with Ian Fleming, and James Bond is partly based, based on off Christopher Lee's like yep military service like in the british special forces hunting nazis played saruman i think he even met jr he was one of the only people that met jr tolkien yeah like he was the only member of the cast who actually knew was like friends with jr and he he was a villain in a in uh the man with the golden gun yeah so he was in a as a villain like opposite the character character that's based off off him him. (laughs) But, um, yeah, sorry. But yeah, well, Hardy wanted really tangent, Hardy wanted his name taken off the credits. He did not want to be associated with this at all. Um, a lot of the dialogue uh, is apparently word for word the same as in the original. Yeah, but obviously but in a way different. Uh, yeah, there's like cadence. <laughs> yeah, like I I kind of want to screen both Wicker Man's back to back. Sometime I kind of watch the original, man. I bet I feel like this movie could be really cool. The original is solid, yeah. And then this one, they're like, let's take everything like they did, but like not well. Well, I I feel like this movie already has a very odd concept, but I feel like it definitely has something to it. Like the original is really good. I feel like the the whole aspect of a quote unquote wicker man, like the the whole part of it, is just kind of played off as oh yeah, and there's a wicker man in this movie, like. I feel like there's something to it, like, and I'm sure the original they expand on it more, but a little bit, man. Uh, yeah, that's the Wicker Man from 2006. 
Uh, thank you. It's for, a weird one. Thanks for keeping up with us on this one because we, we did barely keep up with ourselves. Man, like <laughs> this is a, a difficult episode to try and have an original take on it. Which again, I I will play devil's advocate. Thing, it's not terrible for the first like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. Everything up until it gets to the island, it's like it's not it's not necessarily it's not a great movie or yeah. really even a good movie, but it's not a bad movie. Man, it's, it's a Nicolas Cage movie. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what's a movie people can watch after they watch this Wicker Man remake to get them back in the spirit? I mean, I mentioned it earlier, but you got to go for Con Air. Con Air, the fun one. Put the bunny back. In the box. <laughs> I'm gonna go completely left field. Okay. A f- super fun movie has Nicolas Cage in it. Nicolas I Cage think is I know actually what you're gonna say in this. Nicholas Cage in this movie is really good. Amazing. I'm going with Kick Ass. Shit. As Big Daddy, Nicholas Cage oh is God. awesome in he that movie. He brought it during that movie. Switch to <laughs> super fun movie Holy too, man. Sh- dude, super. Oh man, like yeah, it's a fun. I have an episode I- just on Big Daddy's character in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck. I haven't, I haven't watched Kick Ass in a while, but man, it's a fun movie. I watched Kick Ass two not too long ago. The sec- it's not bad. The second one, it's not good. That's for damn sure. Nah, they missed the magic of the first one. Yeah, uh, but that's it. So that's Kick Ass two, the comic book. So it's fun. This is uh, the end of this episode. That's uh, the Wicker Man from two thousand six. Thank you for listening, everybody. Please subscribe on iTunes if you haven't already. Uh, leave us feedback. Give us a rating. We'd greatly appreciate it. Go to facebook.com slash the Silver Linings Playlist. Oh, wait. Facebook.com slash Silver Linings Playlist. No, the. Nice. Uh, give nice. us a message or a post on our page if you'd like and tell us a movie you'd like us to review that's got a downer, fucked up, sad ending. And we will definitely put it in our rotation. Uh, clue for next week. Uh, don't masturbate on the subway absolutely and that's not even just a good clue that's good life advice yeah yes yeah don't do yeah. that i've <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. i'm not i've not done it but i've seen people yeah. do it yeah right and yeah, oh, i thought you were telling me not to masturbate on the subway like i would never no i mean definitely don't yeah but yeah no well, i'll keep that in my pocket don't. yeah i used to ride the subway a lot and <laughs> Yeah. Came across a lot of those. Yeah. Cool. Mm. All right. Well, that is this week's episode. Please tune in next week for another brand new installment of Silver Linings Playlist. And as always, Excelsior. Excelsior.